Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. So, and then it goes on and on. And it's just basically demonstrating there that in baptism, we're buried with Christ. And just like he rose again, we should walk in newness of life and, and just brings that correlation together. And in 1 Corinthians 15, it's basically just saying, well, then why would we even baptize people for the dead? Why are we going out and baptizing? If the dead don't rise, then this doesn't even, baptism doesn't even make any sense. So that, that's the way I understand it. I think it's pretty straightforward um, to, to see all that in Scripture. But let's keep reading here in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse number 30. And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantageth it me if the dead rise not, let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. And again, this is the same attitude. We saw this a little bit earlier. I went over this this morning of saying, you know, we're of all men most miserable. If there's, if there's no resurrection from the dead, then what are we doing here? He's like, then why have I been fighting beasts at Ephesus? I mean, what advantage is there to any of that stuff, to living this type of a life that's just, you know, dangerous, people hate me. If the dead aren't going to rise, then hey, let, we might as well just eat and drink and be merry and just enjoy ourselves as much as we possibly can for tomorrow we die. Because what's the point of living if there's no resurrection? What's the point? We, we might as well just do whatever we possibly could to, to enjoy ourselves and make our flesh feel good if there's no resurrection. And you know what? That's a philosophy a lot of people have. That's a mindset people have. They say, well, I'm going to die. There's going to be nothing else after this, so I might as well just do what I can, do whatever feels good. I think it's great, though, that God... God lets us know that that's not the right way because everybody who lives that lifestyle, it's not fulfilling. It's not that great even. I mean, you think about what you can do to satisfy or to gratify your flesh. Drinking, drugs, fornication, adultery, whatever. I mean, all these things that could be appealing to the flesh. It's never what it's cracked up to be. In fact, it will... I would say always just bring more hurt, more sorrow, more pain than any pleasure that it might bring you at all. These are just, God has inherent consequences with sin. There, there's just, it's just, you know, the drugs have a toll on your body. The alcohol has a toll on your body. It's going to destroy you. Whereas if you don't go down that sinful path, it's not going to be nearly as bad for you. It's better for you. And these things are just, are just, part of life. And I think the fact that that is a part of our life should point people in the direction of maybe there's more to life and there is really an afterlife and that there's, you know, we don't, we, we shouldn't just have this, this mindset of let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. Amen. 